But first tonight, pro-Palestinian arts minister Tony Burke is presiding over a culture of anti-Semitism in government arts bodies and is failing to do anything to stop it. An artist who has shared extensive anti-Semitic content online is representing Australia at a prestigious international arts festival next year. Archie Moore was announced earlier this year as the solo artist chosen to represent Australia at the Venice Biennale next April. Just two days after the October 7 terror attacks, Archie Moore shared a post on his social media that celebrated the terrorists who had slaughtered Israeli citizens at a dance festival and in their own homes. It describes those terrorists invading Israel as Palestinians making an escape from Gaza. The video he shared showed the terrorists entering Israel via hang gliders and motorbikes to commit the terror attacks. Have a look. <laughs> That disgraceful video shared by Archie Moore, the man chosen to represent Australia at a prestigious arts festival. As you just saw, that video said that Palestinians in Gaza, and I quote, made history as they escaped their open air prison on October 7. Instead of mentioning the brutality of the terror attacks, it shows the emotion of the terrorists returning to Israel. It talks about how during Operation Our Axa Flood, which, as you know, is what Hamas caused the October 7 attacks. It says they overwhelmed Israeli checkpoints and neighbourhoods. It doesn't say that they murdered 1,200 innocent Israeli citizens in cold blood. No mention of the brutality. This video that Archie Moore shared is a pure celebration of the October 7 terror attacks. There's no other way of looking at this video other than to say that it's an endorsement of those terror attacks. And it's far from a one-off. Archie Moore has posted dozens and dozens of anti-Israel and anti-Semitic content. He also shared this post on October 8 that called the Hamas terrorists freedom fighters. As you can see, the post says, so Ukrainian civilians defending their families are freedom fighters, but Palestinians in Gaza doing the exact same thing are terrorists, question mark. And then there was this post from October 8, the day after the attacks, which again celebrates the terrorism. It says, and I quote, buildings in the Iraqi capital Baghdad are decorated with the Palestinian flag and the banner, our acts of flood the name of the current battle by the Palestinian resistance against the Israeli occupation. So again, that is celebrating on October the 8th, the day after the worst slaughter of Jewish people since the Holocaust. And he's celebrating it, sharing a post where it's called a resistance. Archie Moore also shared videos from the Sydney Opera House protest. There are dozens of vile posts, too many to show you now, but you get the picture of the extensive anti-Semitic content that he's been sharing online. Now, these views couldn't have come as a shock to the government agency Creative Australia because Archie Moore has been posting anti-Israel content long before October 7. On Facebook, he posted this in February last year that says, make Israel Palestine again clearly calling for the destruction of Israel. All of this anti-Semitism, particularly the celebration of the October 7 attacks, right afterwards, 
before Israel had taken any military action in response, this is unequivocally, absolutely unacceptable. This artist should not be representing Australia. He should not be receiving taxpayer funding. The body that's funding Archie Moore to represent Australia overseas at this international film, this international arts festival, is the government agency Creative Australia. And it has failed to address this issue. It hasn't done anything at all. It continues to support an artist guilty of appalling anti-Semitism. Now, Venice Biennale is considered the Olympics of the international art world. For an Australian artist, it's the pinnacle of their career. On its website, the agency says that this career defining, this is a career defining opportunity for artists and curate, curators, and it offers a high profile international exposure to new audiences and markets in a global context. Now, another senior figure at Creative Australia, and this is the Venice Biennale project manager, Tamina Maskinia. Well, she shared a post on social media that says, and I quote, I hate that the West makes Palestinians have to talk about Judaism and anti-Semitism at all. Palestinians didn't pick the identity of their occupiers. I wish the media collectively shifted the narrative away from white or Jewish fear toward the 75-year struggle for Palestinian liberation. Oh, it's, it's just extraordinary. The project manager of the taxpayer-funded Venice Biennale doesn't care about anti-Semitism. It's, it's unbelievable, that post, talking about white Jewish fear. Well, many Israelis, by the way, are not white. They have the same skin colour as Palestinians. It, it, it's just racist. It's appalling. Now, we understand that after a complaint was made about this post... Tamina then made her account private. We contacted her through Creative Australia today but have had no response. Well, let's have a look at the leadership of Creative Australia. Well, the deputy chair is Tony Burke's friend, Wesley Enoch, who my colleague Andrew Clennell revealed yesterday was handpicked by Burke to take that position in August. Enoch was the director of the play The Visitors, and he's defended the Sydney Theatre Company actors who staged this protest in Canberra. This is a statement from the cast of The Visitors on the situation in Gaza. We can't help but see the parallels between our story and theirs. So we stand here and share our grief of the situation in Gaza. You came to hear our story, but this story is still happening. And let your love and your heart rage and demand more from our leaders in this country. Make them do their job. And that's not what audiences went to see when they booked tickets to the play, but Wesley Enoch, Tony Burke's hand-picked appointee, well, he defended this protest, telling nine newspapers, and I quote, I think it's the responsibility of every individual to have a position on important issues in the world and for you then to act upon those where and how you act upon them is absolutely up to you. I'm not here to tell people what they can and can't do in this way. I know what we did. He was the director of that play. Now, Tony Burke also defended the right of these actors to protest. And it led to this criticism from opposition leader Peter Dutton today. The insensitivity of some people and getting actors who want to pretend to be politicians, uh, nobody's going to pay to go and see that, and nobody should go to pay and see that. And I think Minister Burke uh, has been so mealy-mouthed in relation to his response. Uh, it just continues the fact that this government speaks out of both sides of, it, of its mouth when it comes to uh, this very important issue. There is no room for, you know, for the sort of walking both sides of the street that we've seen here from the government. These actions need to be condemned. Because otherwise, the broader community, including uh, those people who are chanting at the Sydney Opera House, uh, feel encouragement for the hate that they continue to harbour. And those are strong comments from Peter Dutton, and that's before he's seen our exclusive story tonight, which takes this even further. Now, Tony Burke himself is pro-Palestinian and anti-Israel. 
Remember, he didn't disavow the ABC of the notion that Israel was committing genocide. I've uh, heard people describe it as a genocide. Do you see it that way? I prefer to provide the facts as I just did, and I think your listeners will will find their own words to be able to describe it. I, I think when we go straight to do we use this word, do we use that word, we end up in an argument about linguistics. What I want to talk about is what's happening to individuals. Creative Australia is the government body responsible for distributing $200 million of taxpayer funds across four years to artists and art organisations. And Archie Moore was personally applauded by Tony Burke when he was selected to represent Australia earlier this year, with Burke saying, you only have to look at the installation work of Archie Moore to imagine what a perfect choice this is for Australia's exhibition at the Venice Biennale and how perfect the Australian Pavilion is to host this work. He said opportunities like these help us to understand more about ourselves as Australians, more about each other and help the world get to know us. Well, if someone who is capable of such anti-Semitism is representing Australia, well, let's hope the world doesn't get to know Australia through that prism. We asked Tony Burke today whether he would still stand by Archie Moore representing Australia, even though he has shared horrifically anti-Semitic content. Tony Burke said in a statement, and I quote, my understanding is these social media posts have been deleted. I actually can't believe that that is Tony Burke's response. My understanding is that these social media posts have been deleted. Can you imagine if someone had said similar comments about any other minority or ethnic or religious group, there is no way the government would be standing by them. That video that Archie Moore shared on his social media celebrating the terrorist attacks just a day after they took place, calling the terrorists freedom fighters, it's shocking. There is... How can Tony Burke not have condemned that in his comment to us, just saying they've been deleted? That's not good enough. And Creative Australia and Archie Moore didn't bother responding to our questions today at all. If this were a white artist celebrating the slaughter of Indigenous people, there is no way they would continue to be selected to represent Australia at a prestigious international arts festival with enormous amounts of taxpayer funding. This is unacceptable. This anti-Semitism cannot be condoned by the highest levels of the Albanese government. Australia cannot hold up as our most celebrated artist, someone who doesn't share our values, someone who has posted on social media videos that celebrate the terror attacks of October 7, the slaughter of babies, pregnant women, children and, mo and mothers someone who's called the terrorists who committed these barbaric atrocities freedom fighters. These attacks, the worst loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust, are tragic and devastating. Our leaders and our government agencies need to be unequivocal in making it clear that a hatred of Jews like this is unacceptable. They can't celebrate people who express clear anti-Semitic views. Our leaders and our government agencies understand that other forms of racism are unacceptable and yet they're condoning anti-Semitism. Creative Australia failing to take action against those who've shared racist content against Jews, despite being made aware of it through complaints. And this is the more important question. What culture is Tony Burke fostering in his government agencies? Why is he presiding over an organisation where his own hand-picked leadership is anti-Israel and senior figures are openly sharing anti-Semitic content. If Tony Burke isn't strong enough to stop this blatant anti-Semitism, and he's clearly not, then he doesn't deserve to be in his position as a federal government minister, just like Jeremy Corbyn was rightly rejected by the British public.